Welcome to Press Storm TV. I'm really excited about this show because I've got a very good friend with me, Sarah Jane Bigat. She's an amazing woman of God. I've known her for a few years and she is an incredible prophet, a seer, a businesswoman. And I just, I'm just amazed at how God has been using her over the years. So, Sarah, I want to welcome you to Preston TV. Thank you for having me, James. And uh, I've kind of followed your ministry for some time. You've ministered with us as a ministry even over the years. And uh, I've been so impressed by how God has used you and just the accuracy of your gift in the spirit. And we're going to be talking about strategic intercession, about the spirit mm -hmm. realm and all sorts of things. But first and foremost, you live in Scotland. But you were born in England. Do you just want to talk about that? Yeah, I, I live in Glasgow with my yeah. family. I'm married to Alistair, my husband, and have two teenage kids. Uh, but I was born in Preston, down the road from here. And my family uh, moved to Cumbria, near Furness Abbey, which was a very significant location. But I didn't know it at the time, because I wasn't born again until uh, we got married, my husband and I, just over 19 well, just to actually 19 years ago on the 11th of November coming up. Oh, wow, that's my yes. birthday, 11th of November. All right, <laughs> All right, I love that, 11, 11, it's an easy yeah. one to remember. That was God giving my husband a date that he couldn't forget. Oh, wow, that's <laughs> a really prophetic day for us as a movement yeah, as well. Yeah, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I love yeah. that, so I was married on that day. Wow. 2000. Yeah, it's an easy one. Uh, so we were born, uh, yeah, born again in, in Scotland and positioned very strategically by the Lord. And I didn't know it then that I was a see a prophet. I didn't know then my call um, and I'd had a life of business. So I worked as a head of marketing for many years for a property company, commercial property. So retail, leisure. In fact, the company that I worked for came up with the indoor snow slope escape uh, okay. that's in Milton Keynes and in Glasgow and other places. So I worked on things like that for many years and I loved my job and I didn't think anything of it in the sense of something was missing. I mm -hmm. thought that my life was full, but I was very driven, very busy, very driven with work. I worked nearly every day. Wow. Uh, then I met my husband, who is much more laid back. He says, what are you doing working every day? <laughs> Chill says, out. You should be living, li living life. And you know, you work to live, you don't live to work. Mm -hmm. So he reset me just by, I was like, hey, yeah, you're right. That's you know, what, what on earth am I doing? Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. had a journey, you know, of meeting each other, of uh, falling in love, of getting married, That's amazing. having children. And just as our son was born, really, it was this, oh, we didn't do this by ourselves. You know, this was very much a, this is, this is a miracle, a miracle of life. And actually it was that really that took us on that journey of meeting God more profoundly. Okay, so I want, I want to come to that because you got saved when you were 31. That's right. And I think that's, I mean, that's amazing for me, just considering where you are now in yeah. terms of spiritually and what you operate in. Mm. So can you just talk us through that, that process of salvation for you? I guess you're saying you started with your son being born? Yeah, I think, I mean, as I look back in my life, I can remember times in my life as a child and as a teenager when I felt the closeness of God mm -hmm. um, and what I came to know in my adult years when I'd given my life to the Lord, what was Holy Spirit goosebumps, what was the presence of the Lord. But I can remember even as a kid, I would like, I can't remember what age I would be, maybe like five or six, lying next to the speakers, listening to Vivaldi's Four Seasons with my ear up against spring, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, the one that's really intense and just listening to that and feeling this, I just like the feeling of it, mom. I just want to, you know, feel the music. And it would be that. It would be, you know, the, the Holy Spirit through Vivaldi's Four Seasons with me. And then it would be, um, this sounds weird, but I always thought that somebody else did. You know, that everybody did this. You know, I don't even know if you know what I'm talking about. Help me out if you don't. But when you're lying in bed, and as a child, you're lying in bed and you've got your eyes open and you see like little lights in the, the darkness, okay? This would be training for me as I found out later. So I would focus on the little lights and they would come to me and I would be watching them change into different things. So now I know what I'm seeing in the spirit realm. Okay. God was training my sight. So, But then it was just like what I did at bedtime. Yeah, so th that brings me to my next question because now you obviously function very much in the seer realm and we're gonna talk about what that really is. Mm -hmm. So you kind of answered my question but I wanted to delve a bit deeper into were you functioning in that before you got saved? 
consciously and okay. were you spiritually awake in terms of you know some people are very much involved on the dark side spiritually mm. before they get saved so they're actually very spiritually aware yeah but in a negative way were you kind of very spiritually conscious mm. and sensitive or did that get just awakened as you okay. got saved so a lot of people that i meet and minister to uh would have seen demonic stuff and dark things and being scared by that and some of the team that i minister with at glasgow prophetic center would have had some of those experiences but for me no i'd never seen anything on the dark side of the spirit realm but what i had was i would call an intuition and a knowing of things and just a sense of things but not in a kind of do 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 you know <laughs> right <laughs> thing, spooky way just in a sense of oh i just feel that you know, I need to speak to that person or I, I need to do this. But it wouldn't have been a, a distinctive. It would have just been, this is who I am. It wasn't a, it wasn't a sense of, I know I have a gift or I know oh, yeah, I'm yeah, special. Yeah, 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 it would yeah. just be, I just know that thing. Um, and I can, I can look back over my life, even in my career in business. <laughs> and the hand of the Lord was on me because I got favor that I shouldn't have got. I had wisdom that I shouldn't have had for the job that I did. And it would just be, people would say, oh, you're just lucky and you're just so you know, blessed in, in what you do. But I can look back and see that that was the hand of God on my life okay. and look back at even where he, he had me born and where he had me live mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. relation to the places mm -hmm. that I was mm -hmm. uh, uh, living and how I worked. And even that apostolic grace on my life to build, to have structure, to have mm -hmm. ideas mm -hmm. that I would have a hundred ideas a day for for anything uh, that I shouldn't have had ideas for. Mm -hmm. But I know that that was God speaking his wisdom through me. But was I aware of God? Yes and no. Yes, in that I believed in God, but nobody had told me about a personal relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. until we moved uh, to where we did in the village that we live in uh, now um, in North Glasgow mm -hmm. and our local minister came along and we got to know him and as we asked him can we baptize Thomas um, our son because we felt it was important to acknowledge that and we had felt when we married and moved into the village we should probably go to church because that's a good thing to do mm -hmm. but in a more religious mindset of we believe in God but no one had told us you can have this personal relationship. Okay, so, so that's how it changed, really. So when when that changed, were you when you, when you kind of surrendered your life to Jesus? Mm. Did you find that your spiritual senses were kind of heightened at that point? Was that a journey? Because I would yeah. see you as a, yeah. I mean, I would regard you as a seer prophet right yeah, now. And we're going to, in a few moments, I'd like you to expand on what that is. Just briefly summarize sure, yeah. what yeah. seer prophet is. Yeah. Uh, but was that something, I'm assuming you kind of grew into realizing that this is yeah. an area of calling that God had on your life? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, what happened was we were very fortunate to be in a church that was very strong on the word. In Scotland, there were churches that are you know father son and the word you know it's just <laughs> very powerful you know the word is the word god uh, god breathed uh, um, word of god the very strong respect of the word of god and so i had i would say just over five years of bible study religious kind of week in week out on a sunday morning but also bible study groups and a study group for young mums on a Monday morning and that was the whole morning and some of the older mums would come in and look after our children so that we could study the word together mm -hmm. and pray together and that was a rich time for so me. So you did that every week? Every week, for yeah. For about five years? Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so that was that was a real gift. Yeah. That was a real gift in the foundation. Yeah. But at the same time God would show us things and show me things in the conversation but also in reading the word uh, things about his nature, things about his character revealed by the Spirit of God. Because um, in that context, the teaching was the Holy Spirit will reveal himself through the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me. But then, the, the you know, kind of fast forward five years, and there became this... Five years after you got saved. Uh, this would be... So from 31 well, plus five. Yeah, I mean, I mean, studying the Word of God and the Bible study, having committed, having professed faith, which is what you do in the Church of Scotland, you make a profession of faith. We did that officially when Thomas got baptised. We also joined the church. And we had done like a mini alpha, which was um, uh, sort of 
put together by, by the local minister, who's a very dear friend even now and very supportive even now, even though he doesn't fully understand all, all that, I'm, that I'm doing. Um, I don't think my husband fully understands all that I'm doing, to be honest. But um, anyway, we'll come, we'll come to that shortly. But this sense of actually um, the word of God revealing more of God, okay? Mm -hmm. But then I get a little bit frustrated in this group and I'm asking the Lord, why am I frustrated? I love these women. I, I love them with my life. You know, some of these women are dear, dear friends of mine even now, and we have journeyed life together. We've had tears in kitchens. We've had, you know, deaths in families and been at funerals. We've been at graduations and celebrations and weddings, and our families are very much knitted together in a righteous way. Um, but I was frustrated, and I was like, why am I frustrated, the Lord? And I asked him these questions, and he said to me, Sarah Jane, I want you to come away from that group and I want you to give me that time on a Monday morning with just you and me mm. and I was like what I don't know what that looks like God but I was it was so sure in me that I knew God was asking me and drawing me away and we know now that term that we use often asking us to be set apart and set our time apart and set our lives apart for him mm -hmm. that God was calling me away and so I spoke to my friend who I co-led this group with at this point and said, I feel God's calling me away. I need to take this time to spend time with the Lord by myself. I don't know what it's going to look like. And at the same time, uh, the Lord had highlighted this book by Joyce Huggett. It's an oldie. It's a nugget. Okay. It's called Listening Prayer or something okay, like okay, that or okay. Listening to God. Yeah. And I read it and I just thought, this is where you've got me, Lord. And I don't fully understand it, but I know that I just need to come and be with you by myself. So it's amazing that a big part of your journey is the foundation of the word of God mm -hmm. because even as we go into right now just expanding on what the seer realm is about mm. I think it's important that people watching this understand that yes. everything we're talking about is based on the foundation of the word 100%. of God yeah. not just going out there and just going with the flow of whatever we mm. see the the, the word is the plumb line is the foundation yeah. for everything mm. we do and yes. we judge every prophetic revelation we receive yeah. by the word of absolutely. God absolutely yes. and I think that that is something that I'm really concerned about right now yeah. in the present day in the present truth of the word of God that we to understand the present truth that Paul talks about mm -hmm. that we have to know what the truth is yes, yes, we yes, have yes. to know that the word of God and be washed in the word of God Absolutely. that it is foundational in our spirits yes. foundational in our thinking that yeah. we have that mind of Christ in the word of God because there is so much deception out there right mm -hmm. now in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. There is so much deception in the way that people access the seer realm, that mm -hmm. I would call it, they access the spirit realm, mm -hmm. things that they see, that they believe are from God mm -hmm. and we know that the enemy comes and presents himself as an angel of light. Yeah, yeah. And I can't tell you how many times even ministering to people through um, through our ministry in Glasgow Prophetic Centre, people that thought uh, they were being uh, watched over by an angel, having their eyes open to the deception of the enemy and seeing that it was a demon all mm -hmm. along. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times people who are seers can be very, very much deceived if they're not grounded in the word of God and okay. grounded in that truth. Now, because we've already gone quite deep in talking about seers, can you just summarize what is the seer realm mm. and what does it mean to be a seer prophet? Uh, for the person that's watching and it's like just new mm. to all that kind of language, uh, what does that really mean? And what are the kind of just brief examples of that sure. in scripture? Well, so First uh, Chronicles twenty nine twenty nine talks about the the prophets and the seers. You know, uh, it talks about Nathan the prophet and Gad the seer. And there's a distinctive in the word of God between the Nabi prophet, the word prophet, and the Nabi is the flow of words that comes up and out of a prophet. And you'll see that in in prophets that you might know who will say the spirit of the Lord says, and then there's a bubbling up, and the words come forth. In a seer prophet, capital S E E R, the the root of that word is basically to uh, to tear through the veil of the spirit. What do I mean by that? So basically, the original pictorial language of that seer prophet is a tent, like this, and a scythe, a, the cutting instrument. And this tent is the same pictorial language in the old Hebrew of the tent, the veil between heaven and earth. 
So basically a seer prophet is cutting that, if you will, with sight, with senses, spiritual senses, cutting through that veil between this seen realm and the unseen realm. And we know that Paul tells us in the New Testament, yeah. fix your eyes the on unseen. the things that are unseen, the unseen rather than the seen, because the seen is temporary, this is temporary, mm -hmm. but the unseen realm is eternal. And so that's, uh, what's that, Second Corinthians 4.18. So that is so key that we, we look beyond what Just we see. Just what we see. can see with our natural mm. eyes. So fundamentally yes. that's what a seer prophet is, is, is seeing beyond that. Now we, we believe and we teach that um, the seer realm or the spirit realm is available to us all because we know all may prophesy, mm -hmm. yeah, the word mm -hmm. of God says. So if we can all prophesy and we are all spirit beings, we're all spirit and flesh, we are seated with Christ in the heavenly realms, then we have access to this realm mm -hmm. all the time. Are we aware of it all the time? Probably not because we're in a, in a bloody of flesh. However, our spirit, as we train our senses, in the Hebrews 5.14 way of training our senses to discern good and evil, to discern between the spirits and to discern between what we see in the unseen, we enable ourselves to be able to, if you will, move from looking at the unseen to looking at what's seen. So right now I'm looking at you and I'm aware of the room that we're in, but also I can look in the spirit and I can train my senses to see beyond that, to okay. feel beyond now, that. Let me just ask some questions around that. So in essence, what you're saying is, as believers, we all have spiritual senses and we have the ability mm -hmm. to engage with spiritual realities. In the same yeah. way, like, there's the office of the prophet in the mm. fivefold ministry. We're all called to prophesy. Yes. But not everyone is in the office of the prophet. Are you also saying then that um, we all have the ability to see, but not everyone is necessarily a seer prophet? Yes. I think that that's absolutely brilliant how you've put that because basically the spirit realm is available to us all, I believe. The revelation of God is available to us all because fundamentally we are spirit beings. Mm -hmm. We have sight, we have smell, taste, touch, hearing, and we have our emotions which feel also. Uh, in the natural realm, as in what I'm feeling right now, what I'm smelling right now, but I believe all of our senses are also awakened spiritually when we allow God to awaken them. Mm -hmm. So in my case, if I go back to the story mm -hmm. of when I was called to set my time apart with the Lord, mm -hmm. I was like, I have no idea here, God, how I'm going to do this, what you're asking of me. I didn't know even in my house where to sit. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. what, where do I go, God? Do I go a walk with you? Do I sit in the bed, you mm -hmm. know, in the bedroom? Do I go in the kitchen? You know, what, what do I do? And I felt just to go in the bedroom. And we know that that chamber kind of imagery. Shutting the um, door. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. shutting the door, the secret place. Yes. And I just thought, you know, I just felt to lie down on the carpet and I led face down on the carpet and I just prayed that prayer of Samuel, not really fully understanding my call at that time. You know, I'm just on a journey with the Lord mm -hmm. here and I just led down on the carpet and I said, here I am, Lord, I'm your servant and I'm listening. And I just led there and God began to speak to me and he began to speak to me about him, about me and about other things that he put on my heart to pray for. And I just felt that intimacy with the Lord. And those times with the Lord are some of the most precious times. Okay, now this may, seem, this may seem quite basic, but I think it's also relevant for people watching. And when you say God began to speak to you, was that in a pictorial form? Was that in a, an okay. impression? Was mm -hmm. that an audible voice? Was that just a knowing? Was it through the word of God? How was God speaking to you in okay. that time? Okay, so all of those things you said yeah, are yeah, ways yeah. that God speaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ob obviously in scripture, it can be through dreams, yes, visions, yes, yes. closed visions, open visions. What are closed visions? Closed visions with your eyes closed, yeah, yeah, open yeah. visions with your eyes open, simple. Uh, and other n just knowings. So for me, it was, I was hearing the voice of God, mm -hmm. but I was also seeing closed visions. And okay. in this first time, and then ongoing, I trained my senses by closing my eyes, by quieting my spirit, and by listening to God. So just sitting there and waiting on the Lord, Lord, what do you want to say to me? And then I would just um, begin to, uh, to acknowledge 
this is you speaking to me, Lord, and you know, yes, I will be obedient to what you're so saying. So the Samuel model, me. that's what you're referring to. Yeah, yes, that yes, Samuel yes. model of God speak to me now. Yeah. Did I have a place or a leader to go to 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 speak? Like Samuel spoke to Eli. Yeah. At that time, my leader was my minister in the Church of Scotland, and he was super encouraging of me because he knew me, and I had a I had a trust built up with him, and he. I shared my journey with him and I kind of had said to him, you know, I don't really fully understand some of these things that I'm hearing and seeing because I would see visions and my minister would be in the visions and I would share what I saw. And because I had a bit of an artist gift, I would draw a picture and then I would scribble what I, you know, in writing what I saw the Lord say with the picture. So, so these were closed I visions. I submit, submit to him and say, yeah. this is what I'm feeling. Can I, can I let you see it? And what, what do you feel about it? And he says, well, he was very wise. He often wouldn't say a lot. He would listen. And then he would say something like, I believe this is of the Lord. And thank you for that. You know, he would, he would take it and he would encourage me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's so important, I think, is to have somebody that you submit. Yes, your words to. Yeah. Yes. Submit what you're sensing. So everybody needs a leader in their lives yeah. because that's godly authority. Yeah. So if you're an isolated person, that's not biblical. You mm -hmm, need to be mm -hmm, submitted to someone in yes. authority. Yes, absolutely. Well, like press storm, if somebody of your team, like yeah. in my team in Purple Company, I'm going to say to them, you need to be part of a group. You need absolutely. to submit that to your leader absolutely. and trust your leader that whatever they do with that prophetic word is up to them because they're the leader, right? Yeah. Hope this video has been a blessing to you. Uh, please do consider sharing this video with your friends. And if you've got questions about the content in this uh, video, please do sh uh, share them below. Do ask your questions below. We hope to get back to you on them. And also we'd love you to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we do release regular teachings like this and music videos that we believe will be a blessing to you. Thank you and God bless you.